I recently bought these three sets sealed for $8 at a yard sale, and I have to say, they might have changed my mind about LEGO Castle. I've been on record for hating Castle 2013 for cutting LEGO Kingdom short and generally having pretty uninspired builds, but after building these three sets and having them in hand for a few days, I think my mind has changed. Let's first take a look at all the minifigures that came with the sets. We have six of the blue lion knights and five red dragons. I've always said that I appreciate Castle 2013 for having some really beautiful minifigs and graphic design work, and now that I have them in person for the first time, I have to say I like them even more than I did before. Taking a look at the blue lions first, we have three different variations of torsos. One has a printed breastplate over cloth, while another has a set of chainmail, and the last fig has a simple cloth outfit. I absolutely love that they gave this faction so many different torsos in just three sets. We just don't see that kind of variation and diversity when it comes to modern castle figs. It actually kind of harkens back to the classic era of castle where we would get different torsos for the same faction. We also have a heavily armored knight that comes with a pair of printed plate legs and a really nicely detailed breastplate piece along with what is probably my personal favorite castle helmet. And all of their helmets come come in the old metallic silver color which is really striking. Let's now take a look at the red dragons. What I immediately notice is there's not nearly as much variation in torsos here. At first glance it looks like they all share the exact same print, but there's actually a small difference in the collar. Two of them have plate collars while the other two do not. To me they should have included another torso so that each faction has three unique torsos. It's a really strange decision in my opinion to leave out one of the torso differences for the red dragons, but nonetheless they still look really good and what really stands out to me about them is their face prints. They have really nice face prints. It's often hard to find mean looking or angry faces for figs, but the red dragons have some great prints going on here and I actually use one of them for one of my raven figs that you might have seen before. Their heavy knight is also really lovely. I appreciate that they gave them the larger ovoid kite shield as it suits the heavy knights really well in my opinion. The breastplate on this one is pretty decent overall, but I think the lion's one slightly edges it out. And finally, to round off the dragons, we have their barding. This barding is the same one that just recently came out in the lion knight's castle and it was actually introduced in this theme in castle 2013. They absolutely nailed the design here and we also got a new horse head armor piece which we haven't seen since. I think the reason we haven't seen this piece again is because it has a tendency to scratch the horse's face. I noticed this when I put the armor on my horse for the first time. It was incredibly stiff and hard to get over the molded head. I'd really like to see them bring this piece back but slightly modified so that it doesn't damage the horse anymore. There's also a Lion Knights version of this of course but it came in the flagship castle set and I don't own that as of right now. Something I also did was take the torsos from the heavy knights because they're covered by breastplates and I gave them to two other figs so that I could have two extra figs for each faction. I'd recommend everyone do this for any figs they have that have a breastplate with a really nice print underneath. It's a way to kind of get more minifigures for what you have. Finally, to round off the minifigure section of this review, I wanted to point out something that I was left pretty disappointed by. There is a massive lack of shields in these sets. The three sets include a whopping 11 minifigures, which is really great, but it only included four shields for the figs. Super weird. Now there were two more shields included for the lions, but it was part of the build, so I'm not really counting them, as that's not what they're intended for. Even if you do count those, there's still a massive lack of shields in these sets. This is really surprising because other than this, I think they really nailed the figs in this theme. Alright, let's now move on to the builds. I'll first start off with the smallest build, which came from set 70400, the Forest Ambush. This set is a battle pack, so the build is super minimal, but I actually really like that when it comes to battle pack builds. It's a small terrain build and a moving cart. Now this is a formula that LEGO loves to use for its battle packs. Most notably, the two Mandalorian battle packs use the same format, with a turret or landscape build along with a small vehicle. I think this is a really nice format for battle packs. Now there's a surprising amount of play possibilities here with such a small build of under 100 pieces. These flick fire missiles immediately brought me back to my childhood when I first started building the set. Do you remember how much these little bastards would hurt when you'd flick them? It is not a feature that I miss. I'm so glad that we have spring-loaded shooters and stud shooters now. As far as battle packs go, I think this is just almost perfect. A decent build with great figs, what else could you want from a battle pack? If we get a new castle theme, I'd love to see LEGO use this set as a reference to what makes a really good castle battle pack. Let's now move on to the second largest of the three sets we have here today. It is set 70401 Gold Getaway. Now this set actually came with less figures than the smaller battle pack set, but it included a meteor build and a horse. This set has you build a small tower and a really solid ballista build for the lions. I was really surprised by how much I loved this ballista design. It came together really nicely and it uses the same flickfire missiles unfortunately, but I think it looks really solid. The outpost on the other hand is a very wimpy build, and honestly these pieces should have been put into another fig or detailing the wagon a bit more. The main build of this set is a horse-drawn carriage with a super fun play feature. 
If you press this pin on the back side of the wagon, it'll knock off a chain that's locking the door in place and would let any captive minifigures escape. It's such a simple design, but I really love the idea of it so much. And on the back of the wagon, there is the aforementioned gold inside of a treasure chest along with a few other jewels. Another aspect of this set that I really, really appreciate is the printed lock piece, and you actually get a few extras of these, so I will definitely be using these for some of my own mocks. Overall, I think this is my favorite of the three sets build-wise, but there should have been another fig for the dragons here in my opinion. Moving on to our largest and final set of the video, set 70402, the Gatehouse Raid. The set came with four figures and another horse, but this time with a barding. It's also the only of the three to include a sticker sheet. Unfortunately, the only things that were missing from the sets that I bought was the sticker sheet for this set and a plate for this set. So the base you see here in brown is actually meant to be green, and the two plastic banners are meant to have crown stickers on them, but I don't currently have them. I will be ordering them soon though. Alright, so first we have a small rolling catapult for the dragons. I'm not sure if you noticed, but a lot of the Dragon Knight builds here have these red cheese slopes on them, and I think they're meant to represent dragon scales. I just noticed this while writing the script for the video, and I think that's an awesome little design cue, so kudos to the designers for doing that. It's a really, really nice inclusion. Now, the catapult isn't anything special, but it gets the job done. The main course here is the gatehouse, which is actually modular. I absolutely love stuff like this. You could actually connect this set to the large Lion Knight's castle that came out of the same wave. This isn't something I see talked about a lot when I see discussions about Castle 2013, but I absolutely love this modular function. The two sets had the same pin modular function, so you could create a lot of different setups and even build your own modular walls to add on to the sets. The main middle tower here comes together really quickly, and while its basic building techniques aren't very engaging for myself, I could see a young kid really enjoying this set. The primary play feature of the set is this catapult on the main wall that uses a small rubber Technic piece to launch projectiles. It's a really fun play feature, and I think it's executed really well for such a small set. You also have a place on the top of the tower to have a crossbowman post up, which is really nice. And on the back side of the set, we can see a jail cell that uses the same lock one by one tile from the previous set. I love that it's here again because I really need more of these pieces. And a small section on the other side has a mounted crossbow. For what it's worth, I went into the set already really disliking the build for it, but now that I've built it myself, I'll say this. It's a good set for young kids, but as is true for pretty much all of Castle 2013 sets, I don't think it makes for a good display set, and it doesn't have any building techniques that make the building experience a very memorable one. So in conclusion, these sets have changed my mind a little bit about Castle 2013, the figures are even better in person, and the introduction of the horse barding and horse head armor was a great inclusion for this theme, but sadly the builds just don't do anything new or interesting. Which is fine, because at the end of the day, these sets were meant to get a new generation of kids into Castle, and for whatever reason it failed and only had a very small wave of sets. Hopefully if LEGO ever starts a dedicated castle theme again for a general audience, it can learn from the failure that was this theme and give us a theme that kids, adults, and everyone in between can enjoy. I had a great time looking back at this theme from a new perspective, and I'd encourage anyone that dislikes a certain castle sub-theme or faction to build one of their sets and see if it changes your mind. If it doesn't, then good, you won't feel the need to complete the collection. But if it does change your mind, then awesome, you have a new theme or faction to sink a ton of money into. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please let me know, as it's quite different from what I normally upload. And please let me know what you think of this sub theme. And as always, thank you so much for watching.